Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Action Figuratorium. I'm Mark. I'm here in the studio, Milwaukee, Oregon, in front of the uh, white psych that I currently have been doing photography on. Today, we are going to be doing a Monty Python Black Knight plushie. Ooh la la. So uh, stay tuned for a bit of that. All right, back once again. Here we are, living large. And uh, those of you that don't know, it's your first time here. This is a multicam operation in which you get to see me. Hi there. To see me walk around in the space. There is a uh, couple of cams, one in the corner, one in front. There's also a desktop cam. See there? So you want to, uh, tabletop I should say, so you can check out all the action, see what's going on. That guy on the attack. And uh, I also like to do a subject cam as well. Let's see if we can get the subject cam going. What is the subject cam, you ask? Well, the subject cam is where you get to see what the camera sees. And of course, today's lighting is the same as always, but it feels a little bit off. Maybe it's because I have some of the camera adjustments out of whack a little bit. I'm always trying to make the in-studio stuff look good without affecting also the shots of what we are filming. As you know, I light for the subject, but I also have to kind of light for me or the studio. It's a little bit of a balance. Are there winners? They're all winners. Okay, folks, I know you're thinking, ah, there's no winners in this. Well, you know, maybe there are some winners. Maybe there's one or two. Oh, let's see here. Let's fire up the engines. Okay, this is the subject cam. It's going to make you sick. But we can do a little quick tour before we get started. The Black Knight Monty Python plushie is not going to take a lot of time today. He doesn't do a lot of stuff. He just kind of lays there. So that is the workstation. And you can see, hey, I've actually got Twitch up. I am streaming live on Twitch at the moment. I go afternoon sometime between 1 and 3. I try to start at 1, but I always get a late start. I had to answer some work emails today. All right, that is uh, Guitar Amp 1, Guitar Amp 2. Those are matching customs. They're just in the studio for coolness factor. Here we see the, uh, the corner, a couple of lights down there, some speakers. This is moving across the psych to the other side, the other corner. And um, we're going to actually check this out. This is where you... Uh, Actually, you can pull a piece of foam off the uh, wall, and then if you want, just stick it back on, just like that. It's that easy, folks. I you think it's weird, it's not super easy. So there's the wall, there's the door, there's camera up there, some blue, some lights. So let's slap this back down. Let's go back to this shot. Everybody loves this shot, even though Lighting today is a little ward. Hey, look at this though. <sighs> Dinosaur. All right, we're back to here. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna grab the gun. I'm gonna walk off frame for a second. When I say gun, I mean the pistol grip. That is, that is this here, which fits a uh, camera on top. And then um, in addition to, you know, walking around pointing it, it's got a little thing in the back that flips open. It comes a tripod. It's pushed down on the uh, two buttons. A little tripod action there. 
Might as well make the most of this. I mean, these shows, I mean, the excitement level on these shows, people, if you only knew what's going on in other Twitch channels, you've got guys DJing with a bunch of superhero figures at the uh, bottom of the screen dancing and then there'll be a boss fight or something. Not sure, not sure how that works out. Look at this, cameras, cameras pointing at cameras, folks. How did that happen? All right, so today we're gonna be doing this guy. So this is a plushie. Uh, this is put out by, I don't know the name of the toy company itself. I'll look it up here in a minute. Anyways, it's made by Monty Python. It's the Black Knight from the movie, and as you recall, he gets a limb cut off, and it's just a flesh wound, or another limb, and it's a flesh wound. And so this guy is actually a plushie that has these uh, Velcro rip-away limbs. Check this out. So that limb comes off, that limb comes off, that limb comes off, and that limb comes off, and it just becomes this, just a little torso. Now, he originally did come with a sword. Do I have the sword? No, I don't have the sword. I don't have the sword. It wasn't there at the thrift store where I bought it. When I did buy it, however, it did have uh, the tag still on it. And this was an unsold toy. And um, as you can see, Monty Python, the Holy Grail. All right? Pretty groovy. You know, whenever I run the... Um Sorry for walking off the screen there. Whenever I run the auto switcher, it, I use a bunch of hotkeys, some F commands, some control commands. It always ends up popping up like little search windows and help windows and assistant windows because all these hotkeys are shared by things that the operating system shares. And um, it's just kind of a big drag to have to micromanage all these things. So here we are. This is made by Toy Bolt. Item MP009, and if you're looking for it, Monty Python, the Holy Grail. And um, a, the Black Knight is trademarked. But that's, of course, only going to apply to the world of plushies and toys. Uh, this is great because he's got this like little boar's head on him. And so that goes there. We're going to do some photos of this guy. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to do some Photoshop. And I've done some for president memes so far. I've did like an Ozzy Osbourne for president, made like a video and a couple of pics I've been putting out, Le just sort of slowly leeching them out. We made Jesse Ventura his running mate. Both guys had on these cool black suits. Um, and so I'm gonna be doing some more stuff like that. I know that I'm gonna do like a Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, you know, for rulers of the galaxy, you know, as father and son, that kind of thing, sort of meme off of that. And we're going to do some, uh, I think I've got a Greedo and one of those other bounty hunters. They could run for president. See, why not? I also have like a Dick Cheney and a George W. Bush. They could run for president of like another country. You know, like they're on tour. We're just going around wrecking countries. And so this guy, because, you know, Monty Python is English and uh, the Black Knight is, you know, clearly like an English thing. Maybe this guy runs for governor. And when you say governor, it means it's, you know, it's G-U-V and then an apostrophe, and then a ner, and it could be probably an O-R or an E-R, or whatever you feel like doing. So maybe that's what this guy does. Maybe that's what happens to him. Um, just a little bit of quick eye candy. If we can. Look at that. Amazing. Uh, that dinosaur is going to end up in a uh, in a different episode I think I just brought him in he was sitting at home oh look at that focus he was just sitting at home he wasn't doing anything you know and I thought wow let's just bring this guy in you know he's he deserves to hang out with us we like him look at that hey, that is that is ma that is not only mastery but grand mastery. So, oh, I see what is going on. 
All right, so there we go. There we have them. A little bit of the grand mastery. All right, where to begin today? It's been a while since we've done this angle. I'm going to bring it back. And I think the first thing we should do, well, let's probably just get rid of this guy. This guy can just go hang out over here. First thing I think we're going to do is, actually, there seems to be a bunch of weird dragons and stuff in this part of the world. Let's just stick him over there for now. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we do a little bit of Windex. Oh, by the way, this week I have done some I've done some uh, Reservoir Dogs action figures, and we just did like a bunch of weird poses. They're made by Mezco, and they're not necessarily the best, the best guys as far as posing goes. They're, they had a lot of articulation, but it was kind of weird articulation. You know, didn't really make any sense. They didn't stand up. They need bases, and they're sort of they're really kind of meant to look cool in the package is what I've decided but we did do some pics of them and I'm going to show you in a second here because I just posted one of the things I made with them to Facebook and I want you guys to kind of see sort of what things look like. So, let's see here, give me a second. Let's, um, I'm sitting down at the workstation now. I'm going to There you go. There is, uh, here is the uh, the sort of poster I made. It's really long. You've got some guys walking there. You've got the guns there. This is kind of the trunk shot. Oh, look at this. Facebook wants to identify these guys. I can actually tag friends in this. Uh, there's like just a bunch of shoes. Copyright here. This is a shot of the lighter. I just thought that was interesting to have kind of a, a shooting down. There's the four guys. The pink, orange, blonde, white. And a little bit of the sort of confrontational drama of the two characters sort of working it out and uh, a lot of fun making all that and I hope to do some more with that as well all right we are back to back to the stewed and I am on the Twitch Live right now. I'm answering things in chat. If you have questions for chat or you just want to say something, if you don't want to say something, you don't have to say anything, really. You can lurk. A lot of lurkers. All right, so let's just have this um, dirty rag in the shot. Let's just have the uh, tabletop cam on. And... You know, let's start with, let's start with uh, getting some lights going. So I think this guy, I think this guy might need, he might need a stand or something, unless I want to, unless I just stand on the psych and shoot down. I'm going to prop this guy up. So... So uh, maybe, you know, and again, I just kind of shoot head and shoulder shots for these. You can't, I mean, when you're making sort of propaganda for president things, you don't really need full body shots. No one does that. They're just a person's head. They don't, you know, most people that run for president or things like that are usually like a million years old. Okay, so next we're going to 
We're going to set some lights. This is a big part of the operation is the light setting. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm damn. There we go. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to put the lights on the table. You guys can see what I'm doing. Some lights on the table. Um, kind of using this as like a side light. And man, I want the, the dark night kind of suck. The black night. All right, so let's throw. Let's use this one as a. As a key light, key light for those of you out there in non photography land is just the light that we use to light the front of the subject, sort of the main light, and that's a little shiny. You can see this guy's got a little bit of reflectiveness. This guy's doing a little well, doing a little bit of reflecting. Um, Let's see here. Let's go to subject cam. We are in subject cam. I'm shooting with the Panasonic GH3 today. I have a little tabletop tripod. Um, I have the ability to focus. Look at that. I really like to slightly adjust the exposure on this, the ISO, the white balance. We're set at 400. I don't know if you guys can see what's going on. Yeah, you can. 1600. So as you scroll the ISO down, the image gets darker and darker, but you get less grain. You don't have to gain up as much. So the idea then is to go as low on the ISO as you can get if the subject is not moving. If you're doing something like, say, sports, you know, some type of running, those types of things, you have to ISO way up. You have to crank it up if you want to get shots that aren't blurry. When I say blurry, I mean blurry from motion. Motion blur is what you need. You need a high ISO, but then you get a lot of grain, right? The grain looks terrible. And so the best way to compensate for that, the best way to get rid of grain is to add a lot of light. And so there's an equation I use when doing photography, and that equation is more light equals less blurry. Now, if you keep adding light, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to blow out the subject. You're going to whiten it out. You're going to get to what's known as soft lighting. Soft lighting, by the way, in video world, uh, works really great for old people. You'll see lots of videos, music videos of, you know, like middle-aged uh, pop stars, you know, think of a share type. And they're going to be real softly lit. And what that means is a lot of light blows out all the wrinkles, all the weird things that get on people's faces, you know, that you can see that the light, that the camera will allow you to see. And that's its own specific kind of look as well. But back to photography, the more light, the less gain, the lower the ISO, right? And the idea is to try and get a balance in addition to working the exposure of your camera. And we have been doing a lot of that. Oh, I like the wool. So when you look at your image on the little tiny screen on your camera, you um, 
And as you turn it up, it kind of the, the sort of it gets a lot. The white background gets a lot more white, and it starts to look good. But the figure itself starts to look kind of terrible. And I don't know how to describe that. But like I said, it is a a balance to make it all work. All right, so I've set the ISO. I'm gonna go with an ISO of 400 on this camera in this room. And I'm shooting on all, everything in this room is kind of white. And it's it's kind of, it's sort of tough to control. And it's not that I'm unhappy with it because you want a lot of light, but, but this thing is definitely, definitely working sometimes against you. All right. So now there's some things I'd like to change on this, if I could. I don't know what happens when you go. All right, we are going to, we're going to adjust the shutter. I'm going to take my shutter speed to like 30 or so. Um, I just hit a button, and <laughs> maybe we should go to another another cam. Oh, TV output in progress. I do not want that. Let's go back to yeah. Sometimes on these cameras, they don't really give you a whole lot of good options. Um, once you turn the Wi-Fi on, you're kind of screwed. You have to just shut off. I believe there's an app for these Panasonic GH models. All right, here we are. We are back. Come on. We're back here. Now push in. Uh, when you shoot. Some of these settings, you don't get, you lose your, you lose the ability to do manual focus on some of these camera settings. Look at that! Can you see what I'm seeing there? Now I have a couple of different lenses that I like to use. There's a wide lens that I have on now. I usually run it around 16 millimeters. There's a couple of macros. I have an 85 and a 200, and the 200 would technically qualify as a, a long lens. Generally a long lens is a 100. A long lens usually makes people's faces look really good. And when you switch to a different lens, you can sometimes, just by switching lenses, you can make a person look unappealing. So in some instances, like in uh, shows where they have political figures on, they will actually switch, switch the type of, of lens they're using just to make somebody look physically unappealing. And there I am. So since I'm down here working, let's just tilt down. All right, we can do that. And if you guys think the camera work is terrible in the show, well, it's ironic because I actually, prior to uh, the scamdemic, I have uh, I was employed as camera operator. Uh, but I would do iMag. I would do live events. I wouldn't necessarily shoot in the studio or on location. Uh, take after take after take. I have done some music videos for friends. Really just more about learning. Um, okay, so what I don't like is, is this thing is not covering the bore, but it, it feels like it is. So maybe we, maybe we might have to go to a different tripod, folks. Folks, have you ever thought about that, that maybe a different tripod is what's needed? Let's try that. Let's, let's double down on our tripods today. Uh, we welcome to anyone who's showing up here in the makers section on Twitch, live streaming from Milwaukee, Oregon. Chilwaukee, as I like to call it. All right, the grip dog can go away. If you get a chance and you like seeing uh, shots of from inside the studio as well as things the subjects that I, uh, I shoot, you can follow my Instagram account, Act Figatorium. It is 
right here. Uh, there is a Twitter account with the same name, Actfigatorium. If you are on Twitch right now, and Action Figuratorium right here is the address for the channel. We are streaming right this second. Right this second. We got a lot of crazy stuff going on. And if you miss these streams, but you would like to see them, to watch them, or pretend you're watching them, you can find them on my YouTube channel, which has one of those crazy dumb YouTube character names, but the name of the channel is, I believe it's Action Figuratorium. If you do a search for it, I think I'm the only one using a torium for anything. And um, I really appreciate all the follows and the likes and all that kind of stuff. You guys are what make this worth doing at the end of the day. But something tells me I might be here either way. All right, so this is our dog. And I guess that's just the way the... I, folks, I'm guessing. I am guessing, okay? I'm guessing that that is just the way that the boar's head looks. It looks like there's something covering it, but it's not. It's just this little shot in the camera. And um, we did ISO. Other things I'd love to change right now. Done with ISO. Um, Okay, I'm changing my exp my exposure. I was at currently with this camera I could only go to at this specific settings. I could only go to 5.6. Now most cameras that do low light will go to 2.8. Does this lens go to 2.8? Uh, it says 5.6, so this is not fast glass. Fast glass refers to the lens and how much light it needs for things to look good. There's a lot of lenses out there that don't take a lot of light. They're called fast glass. This lens requires a lot of light, but I'm able to pump a lot of light into where I can, uh, I can go to like 8. If I want, see what am I? I'm at 9.0. This is 8. Look at the difference between 8. Look at the background. And then 9. See that one click there? Let's take it to 10. So basically, when you're doing photography, you're sort of fishing for the sweet spot in these numbers where you think it's going to look good. And again, this is on, on this monitor we're looking at. You go to another monitor and you find that it's not quite calibrated, not quite the same. And that's another problem with shooting things in the digital universe these days, is you don't know where it's going to be seen. Is it going to be someone's phone? In which case, it's going to get mashed down. A lot of the details are going to be gone. Is it going to be on a desktop? Um, would somebody actually print it out? Is it something printable? I don't know. But I'm looking at this, and I've got the uh, five, six, six, three, seven point one, eight. So with each of those, it takes it down a tick. Let's go to eight and put on a second layer of light. Okay, now here's something in the shot that I do not like. There is a, I'll point it out to you guys, here in the subject cam. It's a high budget show, folks. So, I don't know if you can see this, but there is like one spot on here that is, let me just tilt up, one spot on here where it's kind of blown out, where the light source is hitting it. And wouldn't it be great if 
I didn't have that. So let's take this light here. Man, this is crazy. How you can just hang out for hours and nothing happens. So I'm gonna Alright, so this light does not appear to be having as much effect on it as I thought. So it must be this light. Let's take this one off. And Take this one off. All right, let me throw the subject cam back up for you guys. throw the subject cam we're just gonna so that's on low it's on high I definitely think high looks better on the the boar's head this pops out uh, on the screen it doesn't look too shiny I do have this glare off of right in there there's really no way to get rid of that glare without You know, let's just try this little thing I like to do where you, you start by turning off every light. And that sounds nutty. I know. A lot of people are like, wow, that's crazy. I, I, yeah, I know. You can get over it. All right. So everything is dark except for the backlights. All right. And let's kill those. So this is... This is complete darkness. All right, my two backlights are on. Now I'm going to throw my side light on. And that throws the glare up that I'm trying to get rid of. And my key light, which adds more glare but evens it out. All right, so let's see what happens if we take off some of the backlighting. Uh, it looks terrible. We definitely want that on. What happens if I bump up the side lighting? Recording. Let's take that down a tick. Um, still in focus. This is as far in as I can go on this character. I think the way to do the the key light is just to pull it way back. You know, I almost feel like I should put another diffuser over it or something. Flag it. I feel like I'm doing something something weird. Like this. Now we have been staring at that shot for a long time. And I just want to show you guys that I've got this giant piece of, uh, of mirrored grate. And I'm just, it really kind of acts as a bounce. You know what, I'm going to grab, guys, I'm going to grab I'm going to grab one thing from the other room. I'll come right back.
All right, I have returned. I didn't, you know, think I was gonna be gone that long. So what I've got is, uh, I've got these, they're, they're not flags per se. They're, uh, they're a type of a scrim. And so I thought maybe, you know, I'm not trying to start a fight or anything, people, but I thought maybe that we would put that over this to give it a little bit of a, you know? Sort of diffuse it down. So I'm snapping a couple picks of this guy with the uh, diffusion screen. I'm not sure what else we can do with the Dark Knight, Black Knight, excuse me, other than the fact that since he's got these just rip off limbs, we should do some shots where he's missing a limb. And uh, yeah, the head's a little shiny. I'm gonna worry about that in Photoshop. The little creases there pick up, you know, pick up the, uh, <laughs> pick up the light. But don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna take this key light. I'm gonna make it a little bit more of a, more into a, like a fill. And I'm gonna take this fill light. I'm gonna make it more into a backlight. If it will, if it will stay. If you've just popped into the show on Twitch, welcome. I stream afternoons sometime between 1 and 3, usually about an hour, hour and a half. It's just me in the studio doing photography of toys. Today's subject is the Black Knight Mighty Python plushie that I got at a thrift store. It's a character that has removable limbs. Hi there, I'm Mark. This is the studio. I have a light for me, for when I'm talking from the camera. I've turned that off so that I can get better shots of the subject today. We are in the studio in Milwaukee, Oregon. I've got a variety of cams that we can roll out that help see what's going on from the corner of the room, the front of the psych, and the psych top of the table here. See, I've got the cool wristbands and um, also cool shoes, guys. I didn't want to come out and say that I don't have cool shoes, but I do. You know, are they going to be on camera? They might. You know, don't get mad, okay? That's the first rule of not getting mad. And there's also the subject cam. Subject cam is this guy, ooh la la. Subject cam allows you to see what I'm looking at, sort of. You can watch me pull focus. Uh, the Black Knight here is gonna end up in some memes. I do a little bit of Photoshop. I don't know that I'm particularly good at it. I think it's a lot of fun. And I do what I can. So actually, maybe with this guy, because the belt covers the stand, maybe we can uh, check this out, kids. Oh my god, you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna love this. All right, let's, is this guy still in focus? All right, so we need to go, we need to go back to five, six at this distance because he is a little dark. In the front there on the black, the head of course the is too shiny, right? And let's be honest, it's just way, it's just too reflective. If you're like, if this was like an actual product shoot that I was doing, 
of this guy. We'd probably put like a dulling spray on him. And whatnot. And of course you're gonna Photoshop some of that stuff out. So right now we're turning. <laughs> right now we're uh, just kind of turning because sometimes straight on shots don't look as good as opposed to like a slight angle. And I thought the idea of like maybe if we get like a, because this guy's limbs come off, if we get like a full body shot of him, or maybe he's just got one limb on. Um, oh, another shot. Here we go. And you only need one to make a, like a little funny poster. How about this? How about he's just on the ground? Are you guys watching this? Yeah, let's go back to this cam. How about this guy is on the ground? And... And the limbs are just kind of loose. And maybe, maybe we have to get up above for this shot. All right, subject cam is hot. I wonder if I should make the subject cam text in black since I'm usually shooting on the white psych. So, <laughs> what do you guys think of this? Again, I'm watching chat. Should anybody really care, I will answer questions or talk. Anything you want to talk about regarding the show. Sometimes things not in the show. Yeah, I like that somebody popped in, watched for a little bit, and decided that now this is not for them. All right, so we've gone totally handheld now. Uh, I think I'm going to switch over to the grip. I think we're going to switch over to the grip. I also just like trying some different, I like to try different ISOs and different exposures on these shots because you can kind of come back in Photoshop and you can actually fix, use multiple photos to fix multiple things. There's some things that'll be in focus in one and out of focus in another based on all variety of things. Oops, I did it again. We will be starting the Action Figure Charm contest soon. Uh, I thought that I would do a few, few shows before, before we start establishing these contests. You know, I've got some great stuff lined up. All right, back to Action Cam. Some great shots of the uh... 
So you can see that there's little things of blood in there, and I think that's the kind of thing that like maybe an audience should see. Since that's, you know, it is, it is production, is it not? No, no, I've done it. Once you touch this guy, that's it. He's done. Um, so one of the things I didn't do One of the things that I did not do is I, I haven't cleaned this guy uh, with like tape or something to remove a little hair and whatnot. I just stuck him out there and started shooting. So let's do one more, one more pass. Uh, also, how long have we been going? 51 minutes now, people. Can you believe it? The show is 51 minutes long so far. And we haven't actually really even done anything. Shown up and said a bunch of useless weirdo things and, uh, and that's it so now I'm just working the tape off working the So, not done yet. Look at this. This guy's got like little, uh, here, while we're. This guy's got like little, uh, I guess, it's got like little stubs that come out. I really noticed it. I thought that they, maybe those are supposed to pull out or something when you, Take the uh, take the limbs off. All right. All right. Scissors. This is something. If you have a little studio, you just have, keep scissors here because you're always going to be trimming stuff up. terrible sewing that goes into toys. Don't blame them at all. It's not anyone's fault. And my rule is when you're done with the tool, put it back. Put it back in its place. Okay. Now we've got... Now we've got a show. All right, let's... Um, let's see here, since I've moved him from the stand, uh, we need to adjust our lighting a little bit. I hit this guy from this side. We're gonna take that light down. So let's move this. This the I know I'm shooting right into this other camera. Yeah. But uh don't worry about it folks. You know, you'll be okay. Worst of things have happened. All right, let's see where we're at now. We got the gun. All right, the Black Knight.
just snapping picks at this point. Big part of doing these is going through and looking through hundreds of pictures later after the fact. God, this little this little pistol grip tripod is kind of cool, gotta say. Gotta hand it to the honorable Mr. Dan Goldman and his ability to pick out cool things. Um, I'm trying to make it look level. So get a little bit of a little bit of glare off the uh, off the boar's head. You know, I don't see it in real life, but I see it in the camera. And you know, I do have some extra juicy light on that I put on for a second. So there's a little bit of overlighting going on. A little, a little better now. Let's bring this key back in. We'll be looking at hundreds of shots of the same thing with just like slightly different adjustments in light. All right, let's go to, let's open it up a little bit. Do a little bit of focusing. When I get these home and I look at them, it's funny because they sometimes they look like totally in focus in the studio, and then when you get them home, you're like, you find a couple spots that are a little soft. You think, oh, what did I do to deserve that? Um, how about he's just like laying on the ground, like limbs. Just think of this shot. May or may not be in focus. <laughs> it's definitely kind of almost not lit. What, just a pile of limbs in front of them? Put on your key light. This might be the one that we use. It will sort of be determined by, you know, how much cleanup is done in Photoshops. But there's not a whole lot of different poses you can do with Monty Python plushies. So that has been, hold on folks, there's more. There's a little bit of talking. So uh, this is what we've done today. We took some pics of the uh, Monty Python character, Black Knight, removable limbs. And it's kind of fun. We'll make a meme or two about it. It's kind of uh, sort of terrible filler really, I think, for the show. But, you know, you got to do something. We did two days of Reservoir Dogs, so one day of Black Knight for an hour or so feels like a lot of fun, something kind of cool. Now, if you're wondering, like, hey, where are these, um, where are these, uh, where are these, um, going to end up? Is there a spot where, uh, 
where I post these? And the answer is, uh, uh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. There is an um, Instagram account. And hold on. It is right here, Act Figatorium. There is Twitter account, Act Figatorium. There's a Twitch channel, Action Figuratorium. If you're watching this on YouTube, I do a live show Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you have the Twitch, feel free to come over and um, follow and watch along. If you don't have Twitch, you can still come to the address, Action Figuratorium, and you can lurk. Lurkers are welcome. If you come in the chat, though, and ask questions, I will do my best to answer those questions. I also have a Tumblr account, Action Figuratorium. Haven't used it in over a year. The problem was I would post things to Tumblr. People would take my photos, remove my copyright and my name to them, and rebrand them and repost them. And so it was just like an assembly line of people stealing my work nonstop. And I kind of quit posting there. And let's be honest, Tumblr sucks. There's nothing good about it. Anyone on Tumblr is probably not cool. So that is this episode for today. This is Friday. I'll be back on Monday. Can't say exactly what we'll be doing photos of, but it's going to be a lot of fun, whatever it is. So I hope you guys all had a great time. I hope you get a chance to uh, come back and see some of the madness that is uh, going to be happening next week. And I look forward to serving up lots and lots of toy... Lots and lots of uh, toy photography for you guys.